Welcome, welcome, welcome to Planning Face Syndicate, episode 126. We're going to be talking tonight about the French World Open Qualifier and if the list were interesting, interesting or not. We're also going to talk a little bit about how to create more wins at a tournament for yourself and not for other people. Tonight, JJ is off again, taking an extended leave, and I don't know he he's going to uh, PAX next week, so I have no idea if he's going to be home for that or not either, to be honest with you. Um, but he is off on holiday because uh, he must have a million hours of vacation time <laughs> that the rest of us do not have. With that being said, we're going to have a guest host join us tonight. So without further ado, please welcome our guest host, Matt, the second bench warmer. How are you tonight, sir? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. Also joining us as the regular host is the bench warmer himself, Alex. How are you tonight, sir? I'm doing well. Can't complain. Hopefully uh, you all had a good turkey day. Um I don't know, like it was an extended weekend for me, per se, right? So uh, we did turkey once, thank God only once, because <laughs> I don't know how often I want to eat turkey, to be honest with you. I like turkey. It's fine. They just got to do it right, unlike my parents. Oh, <laughs> oh you can say that because they don't listen to the <laughs> podcast. I should have seen the mashed potatoes they brought. It looked like hummus. It was. The, I, <laughs> Matt, I said that to Matt. Oh I God. saw that picture. It was, it was pretty bad. <laughs> Did they all come over to your house, Alex, or did you go over theirs? Hell no. Yeah, no, I went to went to my parents uh, and then to my cousins because they wanted to have a double Thanksgiving and my stepfather's birthday. It was really weird. It was it was OK, I guess. <laughs> well, say that's I guess that's not the worst thing ever. We were going to do a double Thanksgiving and it was kind of like, man, eh, that's just like a lot of work. Um, and a lot of food, like, I don't know how you can eat two Thanksgivings unless you only have like one plate at one. I don't know. I can't do, I'm a fat guy and I can't do like, I had one plate and that was good for me. Yeah. Well, my, my cousin uh, married an Indian lady and she had all of her family over. So it was like a bunch of Indian food. Oh, well, so that's even like better than traditional turkey stuff. I would love that. I hate Indian food. Oh man. <laughs> Well, what you should have done is invited one of the other bearded fellows to go for you. We could have, we we could even tag team it. Like I'll go in the garage (laughs) and then Matt could be in there. And then Matt and I, we could just like switch out like our suit jackets or something. And then we all wear glasses. No one would even know the difference. All fat bearded white people look the same. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) I think I have a little more gray in my beard than you guys do. Though I'll have to dye it. A little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. I have to dye mine. It's it's it comes with that age, I think. Matt, how was your Thanksgiving? That was fine. Went to my wife's grandparents' house. We only did one, thankfully, but um, it was fine. Nothing exciting. Had the weekend off. I'm getting over some congestion, so I've been bedridden most of the weekend, unfortunately. Well, it doesn't sound horrible. You catch up on a bunch of your soap operas and stuff like yeah. that if you want to, you know. I played a lot of Stellaris. That's not Civ. That's less fun. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we we we. I made dinner uh, at my in laws. Uh, so it was her mother, and then her brother, nephew, and then her sister's family came up. And thank God, her brother in law or her my brother in law, I guess I don't know. They, Joe, this guy named Joe. Yeah, he was pretty hands off and then towards the end it was kind of like like i'm trying to close out seven different dishes and it's like he's like oh let me help you and i was like thank god like that just like made the day there because we did um like everybody was allowed to pick so the where i come from my parents let you kind of pick a dish you want and that's kind of what they do and when you have like 20 30 people it's not as big of a deal to have a bunch of stuff because most of the time somebody's going to pick something somebody else wants. Like my son and my daughter both want mashed potatoes. Right. So, um, but when you have a smaller group, there was only 13 of us and my one daughter doesn't eat Turkey or ham. My other daughter refused to eat 
turkey and only wanted ham. And so I had to make a turkey and I had to make a small ham. And then we had vegetarians there. So I had to make some meals without meat. So like we did all the, uh, uh, we did stuffed mushrooms, which by the way, you could justify as a Thanksgiving course because it's got stuffing in it. Right. You know, like we just used a little bit of stuffing and I considered a Thanksgiving meal. And, uh, but we did like stuff. We did fry or stuffed mushrooms, stuffed jalapeno poppers. Um, we did cranberry sauce. We had, I did some fried green beans and mushrooms and I did some Brussels sprouts and bacon. We did the potatoes, obviously cream corn, turkey, stuffing, and ham. And then I think I'm missing something else. And my daughter just came in and said, turkey is gross. So she he must be able to hear me in the other room. <laughs> Tragic. Yeah. Good quality so, yeah, so, content. Yeah, quality. Yeah. Hey, hey, it's the beginning of the content, sir. We've only been going for five minutes. <laughs> It's okay. Everybody either celebrates or doesn't celebrate Thanksgiving. But one thing we can all agree on is that you get some good food. I don't care what anyone else says. I don't. I don't need a holiday to celebrate good fucking food. Nope. Fair enough. Are you gonna have my hummus mashed potatoes? No. So <laughs> you sent me a picture, and I'm not gonna post it on the screen. Yeah, but that is... are you sure those are mashed potatoes? Those that looks like pudding. I felt the, I felt the same way when he sent that picture to me. It was bad. That, that bad. was my aunt's mashed potatoes. What what did she do to them? I don't know, and I did not have them. Okay, I mean, I just want to know what she put in to make it look like pudding. Like she did, she just not like she put flour in it. Like Ooh, I... we need extra starch today. Again, I don't know. It looks like hummus. It's it's crazy. I don't I don't get it, but whatever. Well, I will also apologize. I am uh recovering. I have a canker sore in the back of my throat. It is not strep, we found out for fifty five fucking dollars, we found out. So it's gonna sound like I'm slurring my words a little bit, but I took some stuff that numbed the hell out of my throat right before so that I could actually talk. Otherwise, it hurts to talk and all that other garbage. So, all right. Well, let's jump into some X-Wing. Before we get too far going, we have what's called the Isophane Initiative for Worlds. If you have not supported this in the past, there is amazing things Isophane is doing, and you're welcome to go ahead and support him. We went over this two weeks ago, but I just thought I'd kind of bring it back up again. If you want to support this month, it would help anybody overseas or anybody in America who does not have the funds specifically to go to Worlds this year. And Isophane fronts the other half of the money. So uh, if you're interested, please head on over and check it out. Link is in the description of our show. To begin with, we're going to do a roll call segment. All right, welcome to our roll call segment. Essentially, a roll call segment is to review pilots, upgrades, ships that we feel are underutilized but beneficial in the current meta. Tonight, we're going to be doing crack shot, and we're going to give Matt the honor of telling us what in God's green earth is crack shot and why did Tanner pick this? You probably don't know the answer to that, but. <laughs> I know a crack shot is a really good um, talent upgrade. You get one charge while you perform a primary attack at the defenders in your bullseye before the neutralize result steps. You may spend the one charge to cancel one evade result. It is really fantastic, and it has been abused like hell in past metas. That's why it's up to four points now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think at the start of 2.0, wasn't it one? I think it was like, it was at least two, one or two. I mean, trick shot was free back in my day. <laughs> well, is that 1.0 1. days? 1.0 trick shot was free, baby. <laughs> yeah. uh, and nobody needs that. So I picked Crack Shot tonight because I think 
we all kind of wrote it off a little bit for a little while there, and now it's starting to crop back up. And what I feel like doing is just having a quick conversation kind of around, you know, the uses for crack shot. Um, Cause I know Alex likes to run bullseye mechanics on low initiative ships and I'm not super fond of that. So I thought what it would be a good conversation is to talk a little bit about crack shot when we use it um, and why other people should be using it because that one free damage I will tell you can make or break a game. So we'll start with Alex. Alex, why do you like to run crack shot and do you run it on lower initiative ships? I do run it on lower initiative ships. Um, the lowest one I've run it on is Merle. Um, who, who's an I one tough to get below that <laughs> it's possible, but you can't only with circle. Um, yeah. Uh, I think the most common slot you see crack shot on now is probably like a wing wedge. Right. I can't think of anything more meta right now that always has crack shot. I think that's a pretty safe assumption. I don't really see crack shot a whole lot unless it's on a wing wedge. But yeah, no, it's just, uh, I tend to put it on ships that aren't as durable, right? I'm not going to put it on a, well, I have put it on T-70s before, but like generally you wouldn't do something sturdier like that. You're not going to put it on like a fire spray, right? Um, I'll put it on like Midnight or Merle or something where it's like, well, they probably will die, but that extra damage will be super useful. Uh, one of my buddies actually just super despises crack shot. So anytime I send him a list, he's just like, why are you putting crack shot on there? Because I'm not getting any other uses out of this ship. Uh, especially at, if you can manage to line it up on lower initiatives. It's very good because generally um, your opponent won't have like tokens right after they shot because it's very low initiative. So you can actually just. To, you know, uh, essentially do free damage. Uh, you just have to kind of be really good at lining up bullseyes. And that's a lot easier if you have ships that are good at blocking. Or if you fly in a way where the, the, the opponent's not going to be able to reposition out of your bullseye that you're setting up. Uh, like in the game we were playing with Matt. I was playing Matt earlier, like literally right before this. Uh, neither of us got any of our crack shots off. Nope. I tried. <laughs> you know, I didn't roll the veins for you to crack shot no, off. That's true. But like he could have, like if there was a time that he set up, he had Merle with crack shot actually. There's a time that he set up, he could have done it if I didn't go all in on Merle to try to kill Merle. <laughs> because, uh, bad. You, you should kill Merle. Merle's so good. Yeah, you really should. I've got a. No, I think crack shots are really good upgrade. It's a little bit tough right now at four points to justify bringing it. Um, but if you have like a double talent slot, like a wing wedge, or even like a, an RZ two or something, uh, you know, it's 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 always good. The free damage is always really really good. <laughs> Yeah, and I, and like you said, with low initiatives, either people a forget that your low initiative ship has crack shot, or they don't care, and then by the time your low initiative ship shoots, like you said, they don't have any tokens. And free damage is really good. Okay, so yeah, um, I have crack shot on midnight, which obviously is not a low initiative, but it does do the important thing of making people sometimes either. Um, well, okay, if you're using Midnight's ability with a target lock, crack shot is disgusting because they can't mod their dice. So any natural evades they get, uh, you just crack away. And two, uh, in the case that you don't have them locked, uh, it does sometimes force people to spend tokens, to like overspend tokens. If they have like, you know, two focuses and an evade and you have, you know, two hits coming in or, or like one hit coming in. Uh, you'd force them to spend the focus token yep, so to, to completely dodge it or else take the one damage, especially if it's like a crit, especially on like salvage. So it's a, it's a dual use. You can like 
sort of use Crackshot without actually using Crackshot by forcing him to spend tokens like that. And uh, that in itself could be really powerful. Yeah, like when you, even if you don't do damage, it can be kind of like a control piece. I'm like, oh, I'm sure you would have liked that focus for offense, but you have to spend it now not to take a crit. Yeah. Which is also why you see a lot on like A Wing Wedge, who has marksmanship and crack shots. So you can like push that, uh, the crit through. Yep. And they have one less agility just as an additional FU. Yep. Real good. Yeah, and I think some of you know, like I said, some of the the underuse of crack shot is the fact that we see we see it on certain types of lists, but we're not seeing it all over the place. And I think that's where that's the big piece here, folks. Is can we get the can you can crack shot be worth the four points in most lists? And I would say, like we talk about Ferris for paint, you know, at three crack shot is a one time use type upgrade right unless you have a way to recharge it it's one time use so do you do you all feel that crack shots worth it in most lists even if you can only fit it on one ship or two ships at the four points or is it something you're taking specifically on a specific style of ship oh man that's a tough call because like if you don't have a lot of mods, Predator probably just is je- better than Crack Shot in general. Uh, but on something like A Wing Wedge, I don't think you're getting that bullseye too frequently, right? On the lower initiatives, there'll be you know a couple times during the game, especially if you're in the scrum, which is almost why I put it generally on lower initiatives. Um, I don't know. It's a tough call because like four points is just like right at the part, right at the tipping point of, well, I could bring Predator or I can bring like a really good Astromech or I can bring, yeah, you know, Magpulse or something, depending on the loadout. I I think Crackshot's good, but again, it has to be on stuff that's like not going to get a bullseye frequently and you need to push a little extra damage through or like you you have a, a a ton of loadout <laughs> or, or, you know, or the, the ship's not going to live super long. Like I've seen people put this on Sam. I don't think you should put it on Sam, but I've seen people do it. Yeah, put it on that's Sam. a good call. Yeah. <laughs> no. I just think that the talent slot in general is like a, um, it's an upgrade that a lead is um, contested. Generally, there's a lot of really good, talent slot upgrades predator marksmanship but um four points is just a little too expensive to just try to put it in every list all right <clears throat> fair enough fair enough we're gonna move on to the a discussion that i wanted to have tonight for our academy 101 segment we are going to be talking a little bit about what you can do to increase your win rates at a tournament. Welcome to our Academy 101 segment for tonight. Tonight, we're going to be talking about how to bring your record to one more win than you had before at a tournament, which just sounds crazy right like that sounds like a crazy long title but that's the title of our academy 101 so i think a lot of the times you know especially on our show we 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 specifically talk you know about a casual manner we talk a little bit about competitive we do some competitive stuff we talk about competitive lists but one of the things that we strive for is hey as a newer player and getting into the game or somebody that's playing casual that wants to be a little bit more competitive how can you specifically get better to allow yourself one more win? And and I don't think this means this is you going from like a three and one to a four and oh, right? Like that's not what we want to talk about tonight. Cause I think that is a different section of discussion going three and one to four. No, um, I could tell you, you have to be able to make decisions all the time. You can't just have a list that rolls people off the table because we don't see a lot of those lists specifically. There is counters, um, that can happen. Um, but one of the things is to say, 
if you are, let's say, a one and three player or a two and two player, how can you improve your ratio just a tiny little bit? Things that we that that we feel are great points to make. So to kind of kick this off, Alex um, has been a very consistent player. I'm going to nix uh, the role better. Uh, I answer Nobby. That's not going to be a discussion point. I agree with you. Everybody should just roll better. But I mean, I don't know. Matt has a negative 10 dice luck in every game he plays. So I don't think Matt can roll any better. If Matt rolled any worse, he just would be like an 0 and 4 player all the time. <laughs> it's a struggle. That's why you bring one agility shifts to reinforce. You don't need to roll. Yeah, don't need to roll. Just bring rack like a true Michiganian. I really should. Bring rack. You could bring rack. Rack is a strong staple, as we realized uh, at the beginning of the meta. Um, so, why don't we start a little bit about you know how do how can you move the needle just a little bit, right? Like, what are some of the tactics that you guys have done in your lives to say, hey, I want to get one more wing? Because when I first started playing X Wing, I was an O and four, O and five player a one in three, one in four type player. And there was things I had to do to uh, bring <laughs> my myself up to be able to actually win a few more um, games in a tournament. So why don't we start with Alex? Alex, do you have any tips, any tactics, any thoughts on what to do to bring your win ratio up by one? Um, you kind of have to feel out like which kind of ships and like kind of play style of those kinds of ships that you like um because i know personally i understand that like fireballs like as can be pretty good and jarek has a place but i'm so bad at flying fireballs couldn't tell you why i just cannot do it they just burn up super fast and i'm not comfortable playing like a fireball but i'm super comfortable playing rc2s which some people aren't, especially like Lulo. Uh, it's, I'm assuming, like, you, you know, you, you've gone to the first step of, like, you picked out a list that's not, like, absolute trash, right? I'm assuming it's, like, a two and two kind of player, right? Uh, you know, you're just working on getting better. Uh, yeah, flying a ship you're comfortable with is, is huge. Or maybe getting better at a ship. That you're not comfortable flying with but like um for like resistance it's, it's very easy right like t70s like i'm good with them i'm not like super high level like bb8 poe big brain trigger happy flyboy things uh but like i'm solid enough with t70s and i'm really good with falcons and rz2s and that's kind of what i build like uh my resistance list around, but I'm not going to bring a resistance transport because besides the fact that mm, they're a little bit questionable right now, I don't have a lot of experience playing them. And again, I'm just really bad with fireballs. I have no idea why I can't do it. Same with the, the Y wings. They're okay. I just can't, you know, I don't click with them. So my, my lists aren't going to do that. So I'm building to the, the strengths of myself as a player by bringing ships that I, I can do well with. Like not everyone can just pick up a, an Ida, right. And just start dominating people with it. Even though you theoretically can do really well with those. It just uh, depends on what you're comfortable with. All right. Matt, how about you? What are a few things that you personally thought of or have done in your life to bring your play, player skills up a notch? Uh, I agree with Alex on uh, all the stuff he said. Finding for, for, for me, it was finding something that I really enjoyed flying. But another aspect of it was, I know that not everybody will do this, but I like, I like if I lose and I want to know, like, how could I have done better? I like to talk with my opponent about, you know, what what could I have done to potentially beat you? And most people in the community are great. They're like, we want you to be, they want you to be better players. So they'll go through it. And another thing was just playing people who were like better than me, like getting over that, like, Oh, I don't want to play. I'll use Staniszewski for an example, because he's a local and he's really good. I don't want to play Staniszewski, but you know, if you play someone who's like really good and is willing to like walk you through 
what you could have done next time to win, I think that's an invaluable asset um, in the community to try to get better. Fair enough. <clears throat> and I think that's, I think that's a good point playing other people that kind of leads into my next point. Like a lot of people are scared to play somebody that has status in the community or always wins. Right. And, and, and I get that, you know, like for example, I make a joke. I don't like to play Alex. Um, but if I don't play Alex, if I don't, there's certain things about Alex's play style that other people do. If I don't learn how to play against that style, I'm going to lose to people that play like Alex every single time. No questions asked. Um, and I think that's like a big, a big turning point for me when I first started playing. It was, you know, what, what am I going to spend my time doing? Right. Do I really want to spend my time playing against really good players? And I spent a lot of time when I first started it. Well, it was during COVID, but I had a buddy that was learning with me and we play each other. And at first we were very evenly matched. Then I started playing online all the time. I started playing against other people and learning, oh, I don't need to five straight every one of my ships every single game. Like that doesn't have to happen. It's a tactic I can use, but it's not something I need to do. And if you don't know how that opponent plays, it's probably pretty silly to five straight all your droids in one block, <laughs> you know, because somebody just might uh, throw some protorps at, you know, some of those droids and you might go from eight ships to six ships um, pretty quickly. So one of the things, you know, I agree with, you know, on is, is play other people, right? Like that's one of the things I did. Cause as soon as I started playing people outside of my local um, area, some of the people I was friends with my buddy, Matt, no offense to Matt, but when I started playing other people, I learned other ways to defeat him. And then I realized, cause he'd never played that style against that style. It became a lot easier and I didn't have to even change my list. I kept the same damn list. It was literally a droid swarm. That's uh, that was like my favorite thing to run in 2.0. And I would run a droid swarm or I would run like a tie swarm. I love tie swarms too in 2.0. That was another favorite of mine. Um, so I think playing the other people, whether it's online or in person that you don't usually play helps you learn another set of ways to play that other people may not see and could be other tactics. Yeah. Playing people like outside your local meta is really important. Um, like I know like, you know how Cody plays, right? I know how Matt plays, right? And I can adjust how I play according to what they're doing, but that's not always for the best, right? You're not going to go to worlds and play, you know, eight people, you know, and I've played long, a long time with, right. Uh, just kind of experiencing like going up to grand rapids, like, you know, do you, you play completely different than like Zach will play and Corey plays completely different than like our other local people here that play roughly the same lists. It's just the getting out, of your local area and just experiencing new new things really helps you uh choose like you know the correct path of what you want to do with your list or how you're going to defend against a particular style of list um and just knowing your list too that's like that's a huge thing right um a lot of people will just like net list and they won't, uh, you know, completely understand the nuances and you work with that. But if like that style doesn't, it's not immediately obvious to you. Um, like all those people taking your. Uh, yeah, like everyone who's running scum my list. scum list <laughs> as a bad example. But yeah, just like you don't necessarily understand the nuance, right? Like. Paul Ever took that Padme triple arch list and everyone thought that was like a Han silver bullet, but Han has more wins against that list than it does against Han. Yeah. It's, it's the player and you have to understand like how to maneuver three arcs that are all have different initiatives. So they don't crash into each other and also how to keep Padme in there and how to not just immediately die with Eda Anakin. It's all about like just getting, some wraps in and just kind of understanding what your list can and can't do. 
Yeah. yeah. I think when, when, when I first started out, like I, I did a lot of net listing and I would say like, I do well against certain players, but then I'd play other people like, Oh, I don't know what this list is doing. And yeah, knowing how the pieces of a certain list like work together and what you need to do to achieve the goal of winning. It's not apparently obvious with every list that you see. Yeah. And so getting your reps in, that's a good, that's a good yep. point. Get some reps in, understand your list, what you're playing. I think another one, and I'll be, i not be posted that in the, in, in the chat is understanding your opponent's list, right. And understanding what you're playing against. So I think, you know, so I'm going to just, to the podcast for a few seconds, we did go through all the popular metal lists for the different factions based on what we're seeing. Those are great tools. So if you're saying, Hey, I'm going to a search chant, what am I going to see? You're going to see some crazy stuff, especially if like 50% of the people already have wins, but if they don't have wins, I mean, I could tell you like our local meta on the West side where some of the guys don't have the wins, they're bringing meta lists. And um, being able to understand exactly what that other list can do to you is huge. And at least what it does, whether you know what it does to your list or not, at least know what the hell that list does. Because if you run up to the Padme um, and Arcs list, you have to know you're not going to get rerolls unless you can shoot Padme. And you have to know that Padme is probably a, uh, what we would call, Unless you can ace her off the board, she's probably a a, a dollar, a, a point sink, right? Same with Anakin. If you can't ace Anakin off at I-6, he could run away and regen his health. Um, So understanding that piece of it, what your opponent can do, makes a lot more sense in terms of how, how we can, um, how you can get a little bit better. Yeah. Conversely. It feels real bad when you're like in the middle of an engagement and you're like, oh, that's how that works. Like, oh, you have that upgrade. That's nice to find out now. I was about to say, <laughs> conversely, this is why my scum list did really well. It's because my opponents have no clue what it does. Yep. Right. And then they just like, I mean, Matt, you played my list, right? It like, took, uh, how it does took it a feel couple, like it took a couple turns because it's like, I'm I'm generally pretty good at understanding the list when I look at it, but there was just so much, and I'm just like, I don't have the Alex mind right now. I'd, I had to play against it like three times. And I'm like, okay, this is what everything does now. Yeah, I'm not saying like go out there and bring like something super super unique, but like it, it shows you the value of understanding what your opponent's list does. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Kylo Whisper, he can jam you. Yeah, you should probably take Tarkalox. You know, yeah. on rocks. You know, just small things like that, or like, oh, uh, you know, Ray. Uh, you know, the the Falcons are like the fastest ship in the game. They can close distance super, super fast. I want to, you know, be a little cagey here to not have, you know, not get jumped by like Falcon Poe out of nowhere, right? That three bank free boost target lock with Ray is pretty devastating sometimes. Yep, yeah. yep, it can be a. Uh catch people with their pants down with that. So another another tactic, another thing that I think people misunderstand a lot of times when you go to a tournament, right, is 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 feeling the nerves. And I and I will give an example. For example, when I went to Worlds, I had to play against Nathan Idy and I made two very bad mistakes with dial setting and completely lost a game because of it. Whereas I was winning, I was, I was on not the verge of being, you know, like I did not handily hand it to him, but just the person you're playing it with in my head, I made it out to be more than what it really was. Right. You know, and it was world. So, you know, the dial mistakes really make a difference. And I dialed in like a, I can't remember what it was, but something with grievous that I shouldn't have done. And Ended up not getting the shots I needed and Zam couldn't put the damage through to win. And I lost by one or two points or something like that. Right. And I think letting people get in your head or you putting other people in your head is a huge one. And and for example, for me, that was worlds. And I'm, I'm just going to say this is because I've never won, you know, larger tournaments before. I've never been to world open qualifiers because we didn't have them when I first started because it was during COVID. You know, Adepticon two years ago was the first time I'd actually been to like a tournament that had more than 40 people at it ever. 
just in my life. And we didn't have when I started, I didn't have Star Champs to go to. Now, like the tournament feels a lot different and stuff like that. So when I went to Worlds, and all of a sudden I had all these specific people I'm having to play up against, it's like, oh my gosh, you know, like these are the people we talk about on the podcast every week. And like now I have to play against them. And it became for me personally very nerve wracking. Um, whereas if I had just maybe had a few beers and didn't care about anything as much, I probably would have, I, I probably would have felt at least a little bit more relaxed in my games. Um, and, and, and again, as an example, I had to play crispy, right. And crispy Owen to the first day, you know, in terms of that and had to drive his whole way back up. So I shouldn't have feared playing fit crispy because I did a lot better than crispy. And then I had to play crispy and you know, there's, that's where my, you know, that's where I started to tank because in my head, I'm thinking, you know, I've seen this guy play like at least 50 or 60 games on, on stream. I know how this is going to go. And then I made a couple of mistakes and there you go off to the races. And, you know, once I made those mistakes, it just went downhill from there. So. You could just be like us and just drink every round. <laughs> well, that's obviously I mean, what I should have done. No, I mean, that's Excessive. not like a legitimate thing, but that is Excessive something we do. Drinking. <laughs> um, actually, uh, while you were talking, the, I think the biggest thing that helped me jump up from like average to like, oh, I can actually not go even at every tournament was just understanding where like the, the capabilities of my opponent ships, like where they can actually go. Uh, I know that's like a little bit of um, like studying, just kind of like, oh, this ship is stressed. What blues does it have? I mean, you can ask your opponent. That's fine. But like knowing, hey, interceptors kind of play like, like this style, right? And so next round, they're probably going to too hard. They're going to too bank, depending on where the rocks are. Just knowing what your opponent ships are capable of. Maybe that's why I'm pretty good at lining up bullseyes just like being able to generally predict where my opponent ships are going to be just knowing uh you know how one ship flies as opposed to another one like a t70 does not fly like an rz2 an rz2 you're gonna be like okay well is this the round they're gonna five straight rotate back or is this the round they're gonna too hard rotate back i have to try to account for something like this you can like try to gauge how uh like aggressive your opponent is but boiling it down to well if i was in their position i think this would be their best move so let me try to counteract that without like hosing myself if they do something completely devastating well i think that goes to understanding it when when you play against certain ships that have insane maneuverability like a whisper, for example, a whisper, how often is stressed, you know, like, and if you see a whisper with pattern analyzer, no, they're probably going to be doing a 5k or a three sloop on you. Like that's just, that's, or maybe a 3k. I can't do that. 3k, 4K, 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 5k. So they're going to do one of those maneuvers if they have pattern analyzer, but if they have somebody like Kylo concussion missiles, they're probably not doing that. And they're going to be rotating, focusing or rotate jamming or something crazy to shoot missiles out their ass. That's what's going to happen. And I think understanding that piece of it, like, is a huge benefit to getting that one more win. Because if you know Kylo's going to three sloop or 5K to try to get behind you, it doesn't hurt to do the same thing. No, he's going to have a little bit more mods than you can, but still, I mean, it depends if you're a Nia Nub, you know, like, I mean, Nia Nub just loves doing that stupid crap too. So, um, or like Elo, you, I guess. Like how you specifically use that example of like, I was in five kicks. Like just did that to Matt yeah, in our game. It. <laughs> Where it yeah. was not immediately obvious that Kylo would do like a five K. No, I didn't see that. I'm like, all right, whatever. I guess he's five K. I guess I gotta yep. live with it now. And then next turn you five straight rotate, shoot concussion missiles out your back. Yep. Exactly, and and that's why I when I started playing FO a little bit more, that's why I like the whisper, and I specifically like Kylo. I do think the concussion missiles is more of a way to to mess with your opponent than the pattern analyzer. But man, if you're gonna get in those bullseyes, I'll tell you what: a five K 
into like a focus boost or a boost jam or something like that, yep, you can definitely catch people off guard. Oh uh, yeah, the reposition after a red maneuver into a jam is so yeah. disgusting, especially with Kylo. Yeah, and then we get a bullseye, and I still got three force, and I can you know throw another crit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just but if we go finger. back to like like droid swarms, right? You know they're not going to come at you at a forty five degree angle, right? Because they don't bank well. Nope. Right. So like knowing it's like, hey, are they going to? Are they going to go walk down the board and then turn in on me? Or do you think they're going to turn and then just jump on the rocks? Kind of thing. Like, you can kind of limit your... Well, you can you can make educated guesses about what, what you think they're going to do. And I think that's, like, the biggest thing that helped me. I mean, also, I played uh, pretty much every ship in the game excessively. <laughs> so, like, I understand what those ships generally do. But it's just like being able to guess where your opponent's going to go, right? Like that's what um, that's what Cody does. That's what makes him like really good. He's very good at predicting like where his opponent's going to be, which is why he does like double reposition, where it won't be like immediately obvious of why he did like a focus and barrel roll back over here, where your opponent's not. But you know, it limits their escape option. Like he'll block a like a boost by one of these ships just because his ship is there or if their ship does do like a boost they no longer have arc on them so uh it's just kind of if you know what your opponent's list does and if you generally know how they fly that's probably the best thing you can do and then uh don't get diced all right matt any other last things before we move on to another topic for tonight uh, just you know, find a list that you really enjoy flying, and then just learn learn the ins and outs of it. Put the put the work in. All right. Well, that will wrap up our Academy One Hundred and One segment on discussing how to get one more win at a tournament. Now we're going to move on to our Pattern Analyzer segment, where we will be discussing store championships and a world qualifier. Tonight, we only have one store champ to cover, but we do have a world qualifier from France. So tonight, we're going to start out with the store champ that I wanted to cover that has the exact same name as the one in Zealand. It is not the Zealand one. This, folks, is from Canada, and I'm told Canada is pretty big, so I don't see any names on there that we know. So um, I'm guessing this is Western Canada. Am I allowed to say that? Who did that? Who did I piss off the other night? Right. I, I, I think they said it was in Ontario. Was it? This is Ottawa. They said this one's Ottawa. So, um, but either which way, this out of the box had a four round store championship, and it had a unique, um, little bit different uh, winner who came in four and zero. Oh. Who wants to take the first list of the night? Oh, I'll do it. I know Matt wants the next one. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so this is an all I five, with the exception of Major Rhymer, um, Empire list. This is not something you see frequently. It has the standard loadout to a Max Bren, the one with True Grid Plasma Torps and Ion Bombs. It has Juno. With marksmanship, fire control, mag pulse munitions failsafe, which I, I can respect the mag pulse munitions failsafe. Just shoot it off rip. Hopefully it hits. If it doesn't, oops, my I out. still get it back. Uh, Vault Scarus and the interceptor with shield upgrade marksmanship. Boy Mauler, just in there with uh, no, no backstab or no Vader. Just uh, just an I five predator afterburners. Uh, Scourge in the TIE Fighter. Although you haven't seen in a long time. Uh, that's if you perform an attack against a defender in your bullseye, you roll an additional die. And then Major Rhymer with Saturation Salvo, Ion Tarps, and Barrage Rockets. 
So this is, is Scourge like is this like your your Tie Fighter Alex? Because like it's a bullseye. You get Predator. You get three rolls. So you're gonna throw three dice, maybe four if you're at I. You know, range one, right? And you get the rerolls. Yeah, I mean it's. I mean it's still a Tie Fighter. You don't get the boost, so it's a little bit iffy. And you only get one. I mean, you, it's not like you have a double mod if you do like a roll. Uh, but Scourge is three points. So is Mahler and Reimer, right? And Tomax, that's why they brought him. And then the two fours are Juno and Vault. Again, it's just, you know, you have five I-5 shooting at you and an I-4 broad Sat Salvo Barrage Rocket Bomber. So yeah. that's probably going to hit real hard, too. I just think it just shows that Empire's got a really um, decent amount of uh, uh, ships. Yeah, this is generally not what you see. I mean, you'll see Tomax, you'll see Rhymer, occasionally you see Juno, and then people bring Vault Scarus for some reason. I'm still not on the Vault Scarus train. I don't. I don't get it. I don't it. think I am either. JJ yeah. is. I get it. Yeah, and but this is a list without Vader, right? Yeah. So this is crazy to me. A little bit crazy to me because there's no Vader in here, and Make you can fit Vader. You can put him in here. Get rid of those two Tie Fighters, and boom, that's a Vader right there. Yeah, I just I appreciate that they brought Boy Mauler because he's three points and four health, <laughs> and then I I predator after birders. Yeah, and if you get in there at that range one right, you don't even care about the the other piece of it. Is it what's the other one that's four points? What's Backstabber. the other one? Backstabber. Backstabber. Yeah. Yep. Yep. The boys couldn't bring it. Didn't want to replace Vault Scarus with Backstabber, which I can kind of respect. But uh, yeah, that that's all. That's all. That's an Empire list. I am not bringing a Rust Cup. <laughs> Are you playing Empire and Rust Cup, Alex? I am not. No, they're putting me oh, in Skull, okay. of course. I, was, I, I didn't know. I was like, but maybe, I guess, you know. It'd be funny. It would be. It'd be unexpected, for sure. I would definitely play Rack, for yeah. sure. All right. Let's go to the next list by Dave Belcher. Matt, what is Dave bringing us tonight? Dave has uh, Captain Jonas and the TIE Bomber with marksmanship, plasma torpedoes, and cluster missiles. Yeah, I mean, Captain <laughs> Jonas, it's a build that is on him. Cluster missiles is a bit weird to me, but I would have put a bomb in there, but whatever. Uh, Major Rhymer with discipline, plasma, he's also got cluster missiles. Uh, Boy Vader, and then Rexler Brath with Juke, FCS, and cluster missiles. Man, he really wants to double tap with uh, these ships, doesn't he? I'm pretty sure they, they, I mean, it feels like a European list, right? With all those cluster yeah. missiles. Yeah, that's a lot of cluster missiles. Like, you have to make your own locks with yeah, Jonas Primer. No, yeah, like, there's no, like, you take a lock and then it's like, I'm I4 with no focus. And I mean, Jonas the, should be able to keep those locks, right? Just because yeah. you have Jonas's ability, but it's mm -hmm. it's interesting that, like, you know, they're not Sat Salvo Barrage Rocket Bombers. Yeah. That, yeah, that's a bit interesting. Invader Boy Vader, too. Mm hmm. Not pay to win Vader. He's still out there. <laughs> but I know how much you love Rexler. I do. I love Rex. I love TIE Defenders in general. Are you disappointed? Would, you would, would it be overpowered if we had three of them in a list together? I don't think it'd be. I think it'd be fine at this point. Oh, Matt, you're so wrong. Would, with the way the game, I'm sure it'd be fine. Just make it be Defender, Vader, Volt, Scaris, and Rex. I just want those three in the list. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. What is what is that? Seven, seven, and nine. Yeah. So that's fourteen. That's twenty three points. Yeah, I don't know about that. I shave the defenders down by two points, make them five points. So, Matt, I know you've flown Rexler. Um, what's your opinion on FCS cluster missiles, and why is it not Diamond Boron missiles? Uh, yeah, I'm not a fan of that. I do. I love Diamond Boron missile uh, Rexler. That's a lot of fun. It's an underrated piece, honestly. I agree. It's just many seven points, but it's like again, like these these tie defenders shouldn't be six points though. <laughs> um. Yeah, that's that's just like that's a tough, like that list hit super hard. But man, like you're in 
like opening engagement is going to be they just exposed you have to do that real well Mm -hmm. to get those locks like you went three and one so he must have he must have done something right yeah i just uh, taking that kind of risk you got to be like range four and then boom range two and now i'm shooting plasma dwarfs and cluster missiles at you i mean rhymer's cool that you can i guess shoot a plasma on range one or the clusters at range three Mm -hmm. again it's just acquiring that lock is hard yep I wonder if they would have like replaced cluster missiles with like thread tracers, if that would be an interesting option. Um, it's kind of a waste of a defender shot, but it does set up all your ships. Mm-hmm. But uh, ooh. is it? <clears throat> it's because Jonas is four points, man. Yeah. Well, I mean, Jonas should be four points. <laughs> yeah. With those re rolls. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like Sasalvo Barrage Rock is such as a natural fit for Jonas that it's it's kind of a big ask to do the, the plasma torps cluster missiles. Yeah. Just feels like you're very modless here. But I don't know, maybe maybe not. I don't know, maybe not. Maybe I guess if they really want to burn your your two ships down. Um, you're just bringing the defender invader in on the sides and saying, all right, screw you guys. I'm just going to murder you because that defender, the defender, I, again, I'm not super sold on cluster missile personally, but no. that defender can murder things quite hard. Like, honestly, um, especially with that juke there, that juke is, ugh, you know, like, on a defender. Um, they're tough to kill too. And their time yeah. on target's fantastic. Like, yeah, I mean, I think Rexler's a solid seven p- points in Republic. There's just a lot of really good seven points in Repub- in uh, Empire right now. Yeah, you can bring Rexler. You can bring, like, Frack. Yeah. Right? Yep. All right. Well, I like this list, actually. Um, I don't know. Like, some of me wonder. I mean, you could just dump those guys and put another defender in there, couldn't you? Couldn't you there, Matt? We just have yeah, two defenders and an evader yeah. and see how well it does. I've there has been people who have that. flown double defender Vader. Yeah, double yeah. defender Vader. I'm, I'm, that's like my comfort list. All right. Well, that's what I expect to see out of you at Rust Cup. So I want to see double defenders and Vader. Are you going to get to fly uh, Empire no, I'm for? I'm flying Resistance. Oh. Poe Falcon. He's been my jam for about a year now. Yeah, our team, our West Siders, we scrubbed out this year. We none of us, none of them, not enough of us were able to go to make the team for the West Side. Are you guys going next weekend or the weekend after? As, two weeks from now. Yeah, two weeks from now. I mean, if you want to do a little segment about Russ Cup, I don't know. Up to you. Uh, yes, I don't know. If, do we want to do it this week or next week? I guess let's get through. The world qualifier and see how much time we have left and yeah. but yes i do because i still like risk cup and i think the idea behind it is pretty cool and if you get more of those uh calculate metal tokens um i will be happily uh trade you a few things for those because i need more of them because i run droids and it would be really cool to throw all those damn metal calculate tokens on the table because people are like what are those where'd you get those it's like Yes, I'm going to run all droids with independent calculations just to throw them on the table. But I need I love three that. of them for Lando. Mm-hmm. Three calculates for Lando. I, get, I, love I, I consistently get three calculates with Lando. You just got to coordinate and then do the calculate action yourself. Easy. Three mm-hmm. calculates. All right. I need them for my droids. So I'm just saying <laughs> uh, you do you, baby. But they look cooler on uh, CIS lists there. All right, let's get into our French World Open Qualifier, obviously in France. This, I'm a little disappointed because there's there's seven unknown lists, which just drives me nuts. That, that always drives me nuts because it throws the numbers off a little bit. Um, but unknown lists did better than scum this year. So, I mean, I don't know how many of those unknown lists had scum in them, but I'm sure, I'm sure they did better. <laughs> that scum did scum oh my god scum came like scum faction performance it was like at 20 percent. i don't even think scum hit the 50 percent mark at all in this in this tournament um i think their highest win was 33 placement which is sad uh cis didn't do much better 
they uh, were around the 40% marker. FO up a little bit from there, which is a little surprising. Um, I thought FO would be a little bit higher because it's Europe. Um, then we had Empire close to 50% and Resistance and the Galactic Republic on top of everything, just doing crazy amounts, crazy amounts of damage here. Uh, there was what 60. No, I don't remember. I, I deleted that note. I think there was like 64 or 65 people that played in this tournament. Um, so quite a few people. Um, I know the Sith Takers went out over there um, and went down to France to play in the world qualifier. I wish America had better like inner rail stuff. Like, could you imagine if we could get to like New York or down to Philly or something else in like three hours? Cause we just had like a bullet train that took us there. Like they do overseas. <laughs> I would just I take a train that doesn't, you know, collapse and derail itself and spill toxic chemicals everywhere. Yeah, okay, I'll well. settle for that too. <laughs> well, we, we definitely should take that yeah, too. That happened a couple times, you know, and in Ohio. I know. Can you imagine if, like, we had bullet trains? How many? Oh, God, I don't really want. That. That's why we don't have them in America, I guess. That'd be great. Um, but yes, it would be so much nicer. Like, that would make traveling so much better. Like in the U.S., it would be so much better for us to be able to do that. Um, I would be able to go places so much faster. Like I, you only have to spend one night overnight. You just like ride the train down and be there in the morning. And then I don't know. It would be fun for me. Anyway, the Galactic Republic and Resistance um, did very, very, very well. Um, the Republic was like, I don't know, like 50 percent. I swear to God. Uh, almost 50% of that cut. Uh, they did do a top 16, um, which I was a little surprised at, but I guess if that's what you advertise, that's what you got to do. Um, but they they have uh, the 60% there allows for so much more Republic in that top faction than we originally planned on. But they didn't take down the top pilots. We had Elo coming in with 12. And 12 we, out of 12. Yep. What are we? How many resistance lists do we have? Oh, we had 12, every single one of them. <laughs> Temin coming in at eight. Then we had Oddball, Jess Pava making a, a little bit more of an appearance lately. Uh, Zori, not surprising. Wolf, Reimer, and of course, Malaris, who she just never goes away. Um, five out of five FO yeah. lists took Malaris too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, then we ignore the S foils because whatever that uh, is what it is. Uh, marksmanship, heroic, and barrage rockets all at the top, and then swarm tactics taking the number five spot. <laughs> like everybody just wants to swarm up somebody, I guess. Um, that was a lot. Fifteen swarm tactics. So that's what 10, 20, 25 percent of the list took swarm tactics. <laughs> Well, I mean, you can have multiple Swarm Tactics in a list, which is occasionally what you see. And you've been seeing a lot more on, like, Elo lately. Has people been Swarm Tactics and Jessica up? Yep. Yeah, I think those resistance salad lists, like having Swarm Tactics in them. I think it's impressive that they managed to get just the resistance X-Wing S-Foils to the highest that's upgrade. Of, and not, like, by 12. Like, that's insane to have it more than marksmanship. Like, marksmanship is constantly, like, 20 upgrades higher than everyone else, right? There's, there's yeah, a lot of resistance lists. Yeah. Then, obviously, Sat Salvo, uh, Plasmas, Jamming Beam, Predator, and R4. I bet all those Jamming Beams are on, like, Jess Papa, too. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, let's see here. Well, how many Jess Pavas were there? Seven. So they're not all her. That's there was at happened. least at least four others that took it. What are people doing? Yeah, what's going on? <laughs> people who else, like who else even takes that? Uh, if you have an extra point, you just take Jamie and Beam. I don't know. That's what I was told. Hello. Hello. Stop, yeah, no, no, it's Elo. actually legitimately on Elo yeah. a lot and just weird, weird. It's on Kari. That's so, what are these people doing? What is France? 
Everybody likes Jamie There's Beam, I guess. Multiple Jamie Beams and lists. Yeah, on different ships, too. They're all on T-70s. Poe. <laughs> yeah, they're they're all on T-70s. And and one person on Magva, the dive fighter. It's, it's like an extra card to bring. Like, why are you bringing this card with you? Hey, maybe they use it. I don't know. I don't know. I had I ran it when we it was free when I had like yeah. an extra spot yeah. on my fire sprays just for the hell of it. You know how many times I used it once, like one time. Hopefully one time it wasn't range three. No, you it have to do it, they're probably trying to jam off racks. Reinforce. That's what they're trying to do. Sure, sure. I mean, Whatever. I don't know. I guess you could use it against you could use it against the 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 bloody um arcs too i guess then they can't share tokens i i don't know why you would give up a shot though i don't know generally word of advice never use jammy beam it's almost never worth it unless you're like double tapping with a b-wing and you don't want that target lock anymore or your your arc is to the side and you brought it on a jump master (laughs) there's like almost no reason ever to use jammy beam it is more worth it to put i think it has to be like four or five modded red like tr- three dice attacks into a reinforced ship for the jamming beam to make sense to jam off the reinforce it's something absurd like no one should ever do well maybe you should do the numbers alex will run the numbers on why we should not use jamming beam because that's that's what burns alex's button bottom there it's uh, people, people who run the numbers down. All right, well, you can find them and bring them to us. All right, so they did a top 16 cut. Uh, a lot of people uh, that we know in there, the Chancellor came out 5-0 and for the day. Um, so they actually played their last game. Uh, um, I believe it was against Benjamin, but I'm not 100% sure, but I think it was against Benjamin. Um, they were playing their 4-0, and you know, 5-0 uh, and game or whatever you want to call it. Um, they did not use Longshanks for the cut. Um, I don't know why. But uh, so I had to go through the list. So if you go through pattern analyzer, the list for who's in first place versus not is incorrect. They are not right. So the numbers on the screen, just ignore. We did put I did pull um, the challenge report there um, so that we could look at some of them. One lone separatist list in that cut there. And of course, it's the list that I don't even like to run. I think it's fine. Yeah. Uh, Quite a lot of three and twos. So as you can see here, they did the four rounds for their final. Um, Sith Taker Tim went all the way to the end of the rounds uh, and then lost to Neil Voss. I don't remember by how many points. I think it was like six or seven points or something like that. I think think he lost to him. Um, So congratulations to Neil's and to Sith Taker Tim as they got invites. Um, Let's move on to the actual list. So I don't know how we were not So Matt, just as an FYI, so there is so many duplicate lists here. Like, we are not going to read through every single list all the way through. So you can say the basic BS, and we can just keep moving past some of them. Um, Just as an FYI. Um, That way we don't have to repeat the same Anakin Padme list (laughs) seven times. For sure. Again, (laughs) I'm, I'm totally on board with that. So I'll take the winner. The winner had the <laughs> the typical list that you see. It's SLC Anakin, Jag, Oddball, and Wolf. Then with Padme with Marksmanship, Passive Sensors, and Proton Torpedoes. Um, so that list still doing very well. Um, I would say the lack of Hans, in my opinion, in this, even though this is supposed to be the Han killer list, I do think the lack of Hans probably... <laughs> help this list a little bit um, and allow this list to be a little bit more potent than I think we've seen in the past. Maybe that's kind of, that's kind of how I feel. Yeah. yeah there's definitely was a lot of Hans too. in the top cut. No, there, I think well, there there's wasn't. four Hans total in this tournament. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of crazy. Um, can I go on the record saying that like this is not the best Republic list and people are just settling because it's easy? Yes. I, I agree with that. Like I I have never had a problem playing against this list. 
everything just dies super fast. Like you just have to concentrate on one arc. Also, don't be in the arcs of the arcs. That's probably the easy part. Or bring a really chunky ship like Afra. But I, I think there's more to Republic than this list. It's solid. I don't think Padme is worth it at four points. I think I'd rather bring like Lumi, which we'll see in the runner up list. Sort of. Yeah. Um, I just, I don't. Or actually, I think bringing one of them, like pushing Padme up to like 7B Mace and then another arc like Wolf or something or Jag or Anakin down to like Contrail or Click, I think is a better move. I think people are sleeping on uh, uh, Delta 7 Mace. I think he's a pretty solid piece in that faction. I'd even, like, split, I'd, I'd even split Padme into like bull, uh, like boost and slider. Honestly, I, yeah. I just I, I get that it's like a modded Protorp shot, but there's other ships you can like. I don't think it's worth it. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't. I don't think this is a particularly incredible list, and I feel like that's minorly controversial. There's All a lot right. more out there to Republic than this list. I would say so, but it doesn't look like it today. <laughs> All right, Alex, what did the runner-up, what did Sataker Tim bring um, that's almost identical, but not quite? Yep. SOC Oddball, SOC Wolf, SOC Jag. Uh, Padme, but with Plasma Torps and R2-D2 and Passive Sensors, which I have never seen before. And then also Lumi with uh, the CLT Lumi with Patience and R4 P17. Pretty much the only thing you would ever run on her. She only has seven points. And Patience is super, super good. Especially for her. <laughs> yes. So I think I like this Panama a little bit better. Like, it, it, it's the region. That's that regen droid, right? You know, so you can use Panama to come in and then Panda Bay can go off and do whatever she wants. And she's probably not going to get killed. Um, if, unless you spend all of your life focusing on her, um, but you could chase her. She's fast and she's going to have an evade and she's going to have R2D2 <laughs> behind her as well. I don't know. The, the R2D2 also works with bombs, correct? That's no. the R2D2 that does. Oh, or yeah, no? That's a Republic one. Yeah. Yes. Yep. So it, it could also be a little bit of tech if, for the bombers, right? You know, like being able to throw the R2-D2 charge to get rid of a proton bomb that somebody dropped by Panama is good. It's good against Deathfire. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Not that R2-D2 Republic so much fun. Like that bomb, you thought it was going off. Not anymore. Yeah. Yep. Which is hilarious. You know, like, why can't I have an R2-D2 in Separatist? You know, like my droids don't want to see your bombs either. Just give me something. Give me, give me a wannabe. Give me a, a, um, a tactical droid that does that. R one D one. There you go. <laughs> one charge. <sighs> All the right. Two is actually super useful when people were bringing a lot of electro chaff missiles. Because I just took off the fuse with R two D two, and I only had like, oh, you shot the electro chaff. Cool. Well, it's gone now. <laughs> also, I powered through it with my sync console list, so it didn't matter. But like, regardless, um, I love R two D two. Eight points is probably just about right because that was a very good droid. Mm -hmm. All right, the next in the top four, Matt. What list do you want to cover? Uh, I will do the resistance list. And, uh, we have Eloatsi, Squirm Tactic, Heroic, Jamming Beam, Zori in the Y Wing, R4, Wartime Loadout, Plasma Dorsal Turrets. It's a pretty standard loadout for her. Snap Wexley with Pharosphere, R6D8, Heroic, Nanisa Doza, Barrage Rockets, Marksmanship, and then Jess Pava with M9G8, Electronic Baffle. Like, yeah, this seems like a pretty solid 5T70 asterisk list. So is Doza just the uh the hues of resistance, except for yeah. it's an I three? Yeah, fire yep. the missiles out the back. I think is also a four, actually. I think she's a four as well. Is she? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, see, and I always tell people they like to me that's like like I like I guess I like Tim M because Tim gets the free boost, so that's that is kind of niche. And you're not going to get you like you can line up bullseyes and things like that. But like I've always like, why not run Doza? And maybe it's just because there's too much good shit and resistance at that four point cost. But like to me, like being able to throw those barrage rockets each way, like all you're doing is just saying, hey, it's like a mini fire spray and it's only got two green dice. So it's not the end of the world. It's not like you have to go, oh, my God, this thing's going to live forever. Um, and it doesn't have the health of a fire spray, but it almost does. Almost. Um, they've got what seven health on those stupid yeah, things. Need a couple more all on a shield, but yeah. yeah. When before before those were banned, when they had the Corey was running shield hall upgrade on on them for a while, and like they like you could run those T seventies with hall and shield upgrade. <laughs> they were nine health. It was so oh. disgusting. Like you awful. didn't get anything else. You just got that, but you had nine health on every one of them. <laughs> um why don't people bring more Veniza Doza? I I don't know. <laughs> I think I, I'd rather have Lulo, honestly me. Yeah. I think Kaz is better than Veniza. I get Barrage Rockets are pretty cool, and then shooting them out either range one or range two. But like you, you have to that's generally not how you fly T seventies, so it's really awkward at the beginning, right? Uh, you don't generally fly past people. Um, you pass and turn around. Man, Vadisa, if there was like a 6T70 list, I'd bring her like all day, right? But like, not saying there should be. But I'm just like, I have four other options or five other options I'd rather bring over Vadisa. Yeah, I think I'd rather have Lulu or Kaz. Yeah. Or even like... You know, split part of the list and have BB-8 in somewhere. But, um, yeah. yeah, that, you know, the heroic jamming beam on LO, or you can have Swarm Tactics Predator. Like, you have Swarm Tactics regardless. Do you think the heroic jamming beam is worth it? I think I'd rather take Predator. I think I would also rather take Predator. Also, do you M9G8 Veniza here? Is that the one you do? I think that would make the most sense. Well, or, well, LO, because you don't have Predator. Yeah, I don't know who you have 98. I don't know why you bring Storm Tactics on LO. I still don't like it. I don't care what you guys say. I do not like that. It's very popular. People are bringing it. I just know. For just Bob, I, I know. I do not like it. That's all. What would you bring on LO? Well, I would 100% bring Predator. <laughs> like, that would be the first thing that I would bring with LO is Predator. That would be like the stable upgrade. Um, I don't know. So if you if you get rid of the swarm tactics and the Jamie Bean, you get six points, right? So three of them go yeah, to right. Swarm Tactics is five, Jamie and Beam is one. Right. Yeah, he has eight points to load out, but if, I'm saying if you're putting Predator on there, you have five points. Yes. Left. Yeah. yeah. So like I mean, I don't know. Like to me, it would because they only have the one talent. Like you, you I don't know. I like well, the hero. Two, obviously. Cause he has Swarm oh. Tactics Rogue. Yeah, he's got two. So you can do Swarm Tactics Predator or like HLC Predator is what you see occasionally. Yeah, HLC see, Heroic Marksman. Yep. And see, that's fine. Either any of those would be fine. Like, I don't do the HLC because I'm not with LO. I don't know if I'd be as good lining up that bullseye. But you can also fit Crack Shot too, right? Like, so you could put the Crack Shot and you could put um, Predator on there. And like, that seems like a little bit better of a combo to me. Um, if you're going to not... Use the M9G8 that way, then I guess, um, I don't know. If, if you're going to give LO the rerolls for other bullseyes, then I guess it doesn't, you don't need Predator, right? But to me, Predator just means LO. My LO can go off somewhere else. That's that's usually what I like. You could do like Predator M9G8 and target lock someone else, right? Because you already have a reroll. Yeah. Or you could be like super weird like me and put Magpulse R68. <laughs> All right. And. Mm, uh, how about this? I like that better than Swarm Tactics. So, like, <laughs> I land no back and me up. It's not nearly as crazy as it sounds. I do not like Swarm Tactics. I, I just, I, I get it. I get why people do that. I don't disagree. It's just, it feels like for five points, you're stapling two ships together and you're going to get it off once or twice. But, like, unless those two ships are going to fly in, u in unison together, I don't know. I guess you could Swarm Tactic Veniza. 
I, I, I yeah. guess because you could have Elo do Elo things, and then there's Veniza just kind of going, no, I'm just going to bank this way and shoot out my butt. I don't know. Anyway, let's move on. Let's not spend any more time on why Tanner hates sworn tactics on Elo. Um, uh, the next list is from Sergio, and it looks like it is SOC Anakin, SOC Oddball, SOC Wolf, SOC Kickback, but the build your own contrail and dedicated slider, and your contrail has a shield upgrade, Besh, and R4P Astromech. Alex, what do you think of shield upgrade contrail? Uh, that's kind of wonky. I mean, it makes it so he's harder to one shot. I mean, he's got four health originally. Uh, I feel like you can put so much more useful things on there than just having extra health. Like another dedicated, for instance, and like a bomb. Proton bombs dedicated fits for that shield upgrade. You could put crack shot on him as well. <laughs> he could. <laughs> uh, but actually, of note, this archetype with like the Anakin uh, double arc torrent V wing and essentially slider does show up three times in the top eight. It does, yeah. This is the only one in the top four and it has contrail. The other ones have click, which is kind of funny. Ah, but man, shield upgrade is. You know, I'd, it's tough to justify to me taking that over like de dedicated proton bombs, right? Yeah, I, I did, yeah, I'll just say I, I I don't I don't yeah I don't see the shield upgrade being that useful on on contrail. It's a three point ship, so. I mean, there's there's been times where like my contrail just gone. I get it, but kind of like your Obi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they all have four health. My Merle got one shot three games in a row until I put marksmanship on him and then never used it again. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, you, you shouldn't like be dying that fast, right? You have kickback to give you an evade. Like you have focuses from Oddball and Wolf. You have a dedicated slider. Like what are you worried about? Being so defensive. I mean, granted, it does like push them up. Uh, past like you know it's an odd threshold for chance but it's still only one point anyways <laughs> like i don't know i'd say and i think the other thing to look at too right is well there's two things right because you have the wolf right and it is the soc wolf but you could run soc jag and now you've got oddball and jag together and yes jags and i3 but at the same token, Jag's getting free mods, right? You know, like, like here's a that, you know, here, here, here you go. Have this, have that. And then you still have the kickback who can still give out those evades. Right. So it's kind of like, I, I, I don't know if I'm sold on, on the wolf here. And if I am like, the question is, would you take Jag over wolf in this list? A and B, if you do like wolf, would you do build your own wolf? here versus the um soc wolf because you have enough other soc mods that you could build a wolf that could do something maybe a little bit different Ooh, it's kind of a hard question right because the wolf like really works with <sighs> hmm. i mean i i really like i generally would prefer build drone wolf i'm not a big fan of the soc ships in general because I, I don't know i just uh that's that's tough like i like jet i will almost always take jag over wolf just in general um but i also don't like just yolo joust with my i3 arc <laughs> um so he tends to not die immediately but like it does have the well i have an i6 three i5s and two i4s kind of shtick but man, I just, it's hard not to just pack a Republic list with a bunch of dedicateds, right? Yeah. You guys just uh, roll in pain all the time. I don't, I don't have that luxury. I want my dedicateds. You love your dedicated upgrades. Yeah, yeah that don't do anything that. for you half the time. I know, but I trigger <laughs> like seven times a game easy. All right, let's move on to top eight list. Uh, Lee Chancellor. Making top eight with another another Republic list, ironically enough. Matt, what is this list here? 
Uh, pretty much the same thing. Anakin, Siege of Coruscant, Siege of Coruscant Kickback, Siege of Coruscant Oddball, Siege of Coruscant Wolf, Click instead of Contrail with, and Slider, who has dedicated Click's got R3, Besh, and Ion Bombs. It's like it's build your own Click. Yeah. Yeah. You generally don't see that too much. You generally see like a R3 dedicated Besh and then Sync Council because you have one points left over. It's interesting. I wonder how those ion bombs played into anything, if at all. I don't know, because it feels like you might be bombing your ships. Yeah, I you got a six <laughs> list. Yeah, I don't know. I yeah, like ion bombs are super good. Like, don't get me wrong. I love ion bombs, but uh, I don't know. I feel like dedicated again would be just oh a God. little bit more useful. <laughs> all right, so let's move on. To the next list, we have Garcia Roche, and it looks like Alex. We have a little bit more to your liking resistance list. What is, what is that list there? Hey, it's Elo with Swarm Tactics, but this time he has mm-hmm. Predator, and yet he's in top eight, and the other guy's in top four. <laughs> Tragic. <laughs> um, it's got Ferrisphere Paint, Snap Waxley with R68, and Heroic. Seems to be a very common loadout. I don't know why people switch to heroic Ferrisphere instead of just keeping HLC. You think that'd be pretty useful, especially in a tournament with its basically just mid, uh, middle size ships. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'd, I'd have HLC. Medium ships everywhere. Uh, you got Jess Pava with M98 Baffle. You got Lulo with Marksmanship, Ferrisphere, and Shield Upgrade. Presumably that's who you target lock with M98 because, man, that reroll out the back is so good. And then Zori with Wartime, Plasma Torps, and Magpulse instead of the Dorsal R4. If you are good with those Y-Wings and know that you can't turn with like the 2R, you got to do the one bank or the one, two, three straight with the blue. That's a very versatile Zori. I kind of prefer it over R4 Dorsal. I don't do a lot of Dorsals on my Y-Wings. Don't know why. I just, you know shoot people <laughs> but that's a solid list it's 5 t70 asterisk you know three t70s and two ships that are basically t70s yeah it's a little weird seeing lulu with the ferris for paint but i mean i guess i get it right it's it's a known quantity it's worked uh and it might help save your lulu i mean they just get a stress, right? <laughs> or just yeah. bullseye Lulo. I don't know. Uh, I, we know my stance on Ferris for paint. If I didn't, if I had like 11 points to load out, sure, Ferris is fine. But if I only have eight points to load out, I'd rather do something better. Fair enough. The next one in the top eight. Um, oh my God. We have the exact uh, same list, the exact same Lee list as Lee Chancellor. So we're going to skip that. Um, it's identical. And then the list after that is Fitzgerald. The exact same one as the top four guy. Yeah. So must be teammates uh, on here getting some of these lists. Now we're into top 16. Our first sighting of Han. Who wants the Han list? I'll take the Han list. So we got Han Solo, Trickshot, Perceptive Copilot, Bistan, Millennium Falcon, Harrison Dula with Swarm Tactics. I'm assuming that's A Wing Hera. Yeah, it's the A Wing. Boy Luke. And then Bodica, Clan Training and Shield Upgrade. This is like a glass cannon list with those three ships. Yeah. It's a little weird seeing Bodica with the Shield Upgrade. I won't lie. We have seen Bodica with Clan Training and Shield Upgrade before. That is generally not what you see. Usually it's like the Predator Optics Beskar kind of thing. I understand more health is fine. But, like, if you are bringing Hera specifically to Swarm Tactics up Bodica, make sure Bodica can hit as hard as she can, right? Yeah, like, that, that would make the most sense in my mind. Yeah, I, I agree. I, man, I hate just... I hate just general, like, A-Wing Swarm Tactics Hera. That is such a waste of yeah, Hera. She's got Meg Pulse on her. Yeah. I mean, do do something useful, not just 
I'm moving my Fang Fighter so it shoots at I-6 and then dies. Yeah, don't turn your A-Wing into a support piece. I mean, Hera is a fantastic support piece. Just be- better, different support. <laughs> yes. And wrong Han, too. Yes, no engine upgrade chopper. <clears throat> Must not bump into things. No, never. All right, Alex, what did... What is the next list? It looks like it is a empire list. Also, like, congratulations on that one guy. We didn't, you know, just mean to just dunk on your list the whole time, but like, you know, it is kind of a boring list in our opinion. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> yes, top 16, seventh in Swiss here. We got Rack with Vader, Tua, Agile Gunner, Seismic, Dauntless. That's what I refer to as the greedy Rack with that Tua. At least he had the agile gunner though. That's huge. Yep, that's big. <sighs> Baffle though. Baffle's so useful. Mm-hmm. Uh, got Laurier with Lone Wolf and Baffle, which I believe uh, Tanner and I had a discussion about why you're bringing Baffle instead of targeting computer. Because you have a three health ship, you're probably not going to Baffle. <laughs> they, <laughs> they, 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 they might. They might. I don't know. We. This is not the first time we've seen this either in like a higher up cut. Like this was in this was in the Poland one last year was or last week was it? Yeah, the water yeah. must be different across the pond. Uh, it's got Sat Salvo, Barrage rockets, Bomblin generator, Jonas, and Tomax, and then also Sat Salvo, Barrage rockets, Ion Bomb, Major Primer. This is actually a fairly common um, archetype you see, like ship chassis wise for the Empire. It's solid. It's got a lot of front loaded damage. Racks a slog to get through. Yeah, and especially with like two, uh, so you can, if you're not stressed from taking the Dauntlet, you know, do do an action and then get the two, uh, mm-hmm. reinforce. So yeah. I just, I have a question. Like, do you need Jonas in this list with for the rerolls and stuff like that? Like, do you actually need it? Because you have Barrage Rockets, right? I don't know. I guess it, I guess if you don't have bullseye on people, never mind. Yeah, yeah, it makes uh, it really okay. accurate. Rock. It's like it's it's a solid piece, and he's only four for the amount of like offense that you're pushing through with this list. It's pretty solid. I don't think it's like great against like arcs and stuff when they only have one one die, right? Yeah, you could put a little extra damage through if you spend a charge, but generally you can tank it enough. Uh, you know, I mean, like again, like that offense hurts, and if you're flying, so uh, you know, like a, a medium, like T70s, like T70s don't want to see that kind of stuff. No. Um, you know, it, it'll just put enough damage through eventually that the T70s don't you don't get the return on value as you do for those bombers. And Rack's always good. Just maybe the seismic charges are a weird call to me. We saw this. We saw this last week too, though. Yeah, that right. one had like concussion bombs, though, right? Like that is like don't follow that rack. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, no, it's it's okay. I I see death troopers like as a more valuable tool here personally, but that's just me. I don't know. I don't fly a lot of rack, so it could just be me. <laughs> death troopers just nasty. Like this, just being able to be like, yeah, you can't clear your stress when you really want to is just. It's so powerful. I like Death Troopers. I don't think they're like the craziest upgrade. Uh, you just kind of have to not like range control rack. Just be like, you know, just 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 shoot them down, burn them down. If you're gonna do that, like Death Troopers, you can make Death Troopers not not a thing. Yeah. Oh man, I got this list. The next one though. All right, all right, go ahead. Look at this list. Okay, so this is Trigger Happy Flyboy Poe with Heroic R4, Ferrisphere, Proton Torpedoes, Overdrive, the Title, and Jamming Beam. You have Ray with Heroic Rose, Finn, Dead Man, Engine, Title. BB 8 with Han Solo, ATP, and then LO with Heroic HLC Marksmanship. So this is a four-ship resistance list when one of them's Ray and the other one's Poe, and I love 
silly things like that. Um, that's a, a pretty standard like uh, Flyboy Poe. If you're not doing like a BB-8 build, that is one that you'll see. I am confused by the jamming beam option over like munitions failsafe. <laughs> yeah, because those proton torpedoes can whiff. Yeah, you you. I do it all the time. <laughs> like uh, you, you have double modification slots. You can just put put munitions failsafe. I think I've made this point like another podcast a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Um, I really hate ATP on BB-8. Just give him the targeting computer. He's and then he'll have a white lock. Um, on that, so, so so okay. So I I I, do, I would change one upgrade in every one of these ships. Okay. Why does Ray need the dead man switch engine upgrade? Right? Like it seems weird to me. Again, I don't know why anyone would put engine upgrade on Ray ever. I've seen people do it, and people have like told me. Like when I play Tommy Adams, I'm like, why the hell do you have engine upgrade? And he's like, I boost with Ray. And I'm like, I don't believe you. <laughs> you know what he did? He never boosted with Ray. I don't I don't see why. Uh, just bring contraband. The second time you sloop, you can get like a mod. And I prefer novice tech over dead man. I understand like if like Ray will eventually die. And range one over Ray is terrifying, throwing that essentially five dice. And then blowing up when you kill her. But oh, oh, just just I don't know. Novice tech has gone has saved my ass so much more on Ray. Yeah, novice tech is awesome. I can also say from experience, just being able to just yeet a crit that is just debilitating to your Falcon. Blinded pilot, that sucks. Novice tech. Yeah, Ray doesn't want blinded pilot. Oh, Ray took a structural, never mind. Yep. Hull breach. Yikes, yeah. Yeah, like Ray doesn't like always need an action, but you know you don't want to spend your action flipping over a uh, halt reach. Yep. Uh, man, ATP, don't ever bring that. I don't. I don't. I don't want to shoot range zero shots, right? Like that's that's the whole point. No one wants to do that. Yep. But yet, there you go. I would almost rather you have nothing there. Don't even bring targeting computer than have ATP. But yeah, otherwise, um, it's a silly list. You have to be really good. Um, Flyboy Poe is super fun. Ray is super fun. All of these pilots were in the movie. BB-8 did pilot something, right? Whatever that thing was. I don't know what that. I don't know Star Wars. Was it a transport? I know that. (laughs) <laughs> it wasn't the pod. Yep. All right. Let's move on to the next one. <laughs> All right. Well, yep. <laughs> um, it's the same one that we just covered, except for Bodica has standard Bodica loadout with reinforced plating, Mando optics, and Predator. So we'll just kind of skip over that one. And, oh, we have another rack list. Um, yeah. Yeah. There you go, Matt. What is this rack list? I don't I don't know what this is. Either. This rack list is rack uh two of Vader, Agile Gunner Alone, Wolf, and Dauntless. And then <laughs> how often does that lone wolf tree rack? Do you, do you just oh, fly you, rack over when here? Your bombers are dead. <laughs> that lone wolf will trigger all day. Go ahead. Sorry. No worries. We got Deathfire with proximity mines and delayed fuses. Customizable Deathfire. Customizable Deathfire. With proxy mines that you cannot shoot out the front. Nope. Tomax, Bren, Bomblet, Barrage, Saturation, Salvo, Jonas, Bomblet, Barrage, Saturation, and then Rhymer, Ion Bombs, Barrage Rockets, and Saturation, Salvo. It's a lot of bombers in a list. And then build your own Deathfire is very... Interesting. It's very confusing to me. That is, that's a, a little excessive. <laughs> I was going to say, did the bomber packs not make it over to Europe yet? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> All right. Oh, the next list is 
I would say it looks like there you go. It's a blackout, but with plasma torps instead of um, Procket. So, Alex, they don't like you or listen to uh, our podcast, obviously. Oh, um, I actually played something very similar to this list in NCX. If you want to go over it, and I'll talk about that. <laughs> sure. Blackout has fanatical, advanced optics, plasmas, Lahues with the gunner, pattern analyzer, and proud tradition. Then Commander Malaris with cluster missiles. Um, it's called Europe missiles at this yep, point. Europe missiles. Um, hey, I used to run, I did used to run cluster missiles on Malaris for fun, and then I just stopped wanting to ever do that again. Um, then we have Gaelic with Ion Cannon and Biohex codes. And then we have, and this is a, this is definitely a different Kylo Ren. We have the Whisper Ren with Instinctive Aim. Cluster missiles, brilliant evasion, and deuterium power cells, so that you can regenerate that shield, which you probably shouldn't lose very often, but you can regenerate it. So, especially if you have brilliant evasion, right? Like that brilliant evasion when you get the three dice, you just, I don't know, you get it off quite a bit. So, not brilliant evasion. No, you never get brilliant evasion off. Like that's okay. the kind of thing, right? I yeah, do. like what? You roll that many focuses on defense? More than you, I guess. Yeah. Well, I roll blanks, but like, <laughs> brilliant evasion is like statistically like one of the worst naturally occurring things you can bring. Like you can put like fanatical or proud instead of brilliant evasion. Yeah, I always I like the uh, the fanatical piece personally. Uh, that's that's more of my style is fanatical. Yeah, that way if I do lose them, it's just a free mod. So, but it's interesting we don't have um, advanced optics. We have Tyrion power cells instead. Yeah, so this list obviously everyone's at i five. I played the exact same blackout, the Hughes, Malaris, Gaelic. And their Y low was, I think, just like the instinct of aim uh, optics one. And like it can, it can output enough damage that you're just like, oh, oh, geez. I, I'm still not, I still don't believe in cluster missiles. It's just like a bring this all you want piece. But I, uh, the plasma tor blackout is kind of annoying. Uh, you don't get the the sensor scramblers, which kind of sucks. Like, I'd rather have sensor scramblers and like marksmanship than fanatical. Um, it's much easier to pick up the lock when you are cloaked for that plasma torp. Uh, but like that can hit. Like you take the lock early, line up. I mean, the dream for blackout, right? Is to shoot at range two obstructed, have that focus. Uh, but that, that blackout can hit pretty well. Uh, once you knock off the shields too, that optics fanatical combo is disgusting. Lehuz is fine. People don't understand how proud tradition works, so you're constantly getting off that focus lock combo. Um, and Gaelic is is an interesting piece. Typically, you would see like midnight, right? And I think I prefer midnight, but like having ion control is never bad. And um, when a ship dies, being able to coordinate is kind of cool. It can actually work pretty well um, to set up something like a plasma torpedo shot with blackout or, you know, uh, reposition Kylo if he's in a tight spot and then jam someone. Granted, the ship of yours has to die, but. Yeah, which, you know, generally the Lahues or Malaris is probably going to die at some point in the game. Yeah, just taking the lock on whatever ship you think is going to be worth it early on in the game and just shooting the ion cannon the whole time is fine. And, you know, if uh, there's not a lot of high initiative out there, shooting your entire list at I-5 is pretty good. All right. Let's move on to the next list that we have. Matt, we have it. It's a little bit different list. There's a soon tier in there. I see a soon tier. I do, too. And I see Darth Vader. Uh, this is the starter set. Pay to win one with hate ion missiles afterburners. Boy Mauler. Tomax Bren, this is uh, the starter pack. 
Tomax brand. Oh, it's a standard loadout one. Standard loadout one, yes. Big difference then. There that is a big starter pack yeah. Tomax. Hot yeah, the five point no, one. Five points, <laughs> baby. This is good. This is good, Tomax. True grit plasma ion bombs. And then major rhymer with sat salvo, barrage rockets, BT one ammunitions fail safe. Did you go over to the Soon Tier Fell with Predator, Lone Wolf, and Target Computer? Yep, Soon Tier Fell with Predator, Lone Wolf, and Targeting Computer. This is like a Marcos list. <laughs> this is a Marcos list. <laughs> Except for you brought uh, Lurier instead of Mahler. Yep, which I think that's probably the correct call, but I mean, Mahler seems like fun. Yeah, we need JJ here to defend just bringing solo Mahler and Vader. Uh, I think in that list, he would actually bring Lurier, to be honest with you. Yeah, I think Lurier would just be better. Yeah. Unless you're Marcos and uh, you get one, your Lurier one shotted in two games. So, you gotta stop one shotting all of our yeah. ships, Tanner. <laughs> yeah. like, that was like, I, I, I barely won that game, though, in, in fairness. But yes, I, the, they, <laughs> I feel bad. <laughs> they're oh, hard to drag him out of retirement yep. just to like play a GT. Yeah, by, by Lurier. <laughs> But I'll tell you what, I couldn't kill Suits here. Freaking Suits here is... Mm. I mean, if you play him right... Pe- like, and I'm people assuming, do. I'm assuming, like, center, you have both bombers. One corner, Vader Mahler. Other corner, Suits here, right? Like, that's how you set that up? Yeah. yeah. Who are you going to go after? Yeah, and if you send a ship... So that's, that's what your buddy did, is you, I sent a ship up to look at soon tier and then soon tier just sat in the corner and danced and that's all soon tier bothered to do um and then they were one churn too late with soon tier because the suits here had come in one churn earlier and to get because after my tri fighter said screw soon tier i don't care and just said okay i'm gonna look at Lurier. that's when if soon tier had been there would have been able to pop or more easily be able to pop that t81 um, but I mean, I am playing an inferior list, right? So Alex said CIS is the bottom of the barrel. So technically I, I play with a handicap almost every tournament I'm in. So just saying for, you know, future reference there, but I like this list. I, I, I'm a little, I, I don't care for the BT one personally, but I understand why they do that. I, I get, cause you, especially cause you can, um, do it. It's just, that's not my preferred build, but. I like the bombs on Rhymer. I think those ion bombs are actually really good um, in this style of list. Because now you get two sets of ion bombs. I can kind of see you, but like Rhymer, he's shooting last. You might be able to get that crit through. Um, and if you're paranoid, like you don't have Jonas in the list, so you have munitions fail safe for that barrage rockets. I can I can respect that build. Um, I'd like it more if I had like other ways of punishing stress, but BT BT one pops up occasionally. Um you'll typically see it in replacement for like bomb generators, but it's not the worst call. It helps in salvage. And you can do it off barrage rockets, right? So you might still be able to hit someone with it with head salvo and punish them. Yep. All right, the last list is the CIS list. This is from Fon. I think this is the same one we talked about a couple weeks ago, right? Uh, maybe. No, this is this is a dirge that's running synced laser cannons marksmanship contraband. Um, Zam with Lone Wolf Savage Oppress. Proton Bombs, Contraband, Delayed Fuses, and the Slave 1 title, which I'm confused why they put the Slave 1 on Zam versus on Django. Um, or just, crits. I guess. I, 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 yep, I guess. Um, they didn't bring you, PTG. Yep, uh, anyway. And then, uh, yeah, and then we have Django Fett with Count Dooku, Proton Bombs, and FTC. So no Contraband, just we're going to take FTC here instead. Um, it's a choice. Maddie looked disgusted a little bit. There's there's just some questionable <laughs> Django upgrades. It this is I we I don't know if it's a European thing or if it's just people 
I don't know. This is what people are running on Django. I'm, I always get very confused. I also get confused why we put Lone Wolf on Zam. If in this list, you could just put it on Dirge and with Proton Cannons, like you got three ships, Dirge is going to go do Dirgey things somewhere else. So yeah. he's not hanging out with these two generally. Nope. And especially with the Proton Bombs, like to me, if you're if you're going to go all in on Proton Bombs, why not? Why do you want lone? You don't want you just don't. I don't know. To me, you don't want lone wolf. I love that we like look at a list and we're just like, huh, that's weird. You're of strange. I don't understand how this list works. <laughs> I love how we could just use that as an excuse. So we're just like, hmm. Being able to double tap with Django, like veteran tail gunner, is like really nice. Yeah, Tanner and I had a long discussion about this, I think, last week. We we're just yeah. like, I would love to have more shots on Django. Yeah. So I can do that. Best, you got to utilize the, the by not having Dooku and having Savage. Yeah. Especially I don't, FTC. I, I don't we've, I I'm sorry. Like I think FTC, I'm glad it's five points and I just don't see it as a viable piece on a high initiative ship. But, but we had that. Yeah. We had, we literally had like a 20 minute discussion on Django and Zam last week. Like I, I do, this is not a style list. I don't know. Maybe I should play this list because, or a list, not this one, but a list that we talked about because I did run three ships before when I ran Bulba, Eamon, and uh, Kanan for a long time last year, and that was fun. Um, and this list can hit, this can hit hard. It's just this list struggles at like objectives. <laughs> like this is just uh, we're gonna have to murder everybody list. I don't know. I just do not like laser cannons too. Yeah, I don't. Well, I, you know me. I don't like that call at all. Yeah. I just think that's a poor call on dirge, but I get why people like it. And that's fine. That's it's a play style. It's like what we talked about earlier. It's a play style thing, right? My play style with dirge is not to run sync. I want my extra points. That's just, that's just how I ran. I mean, at this point, like you could even, like, you could take proton cannons and you can run novice tech if you want. You can run electronic baffle, which would make a little bit of sense if you want. Um, I don't know. So, yeah, I mean, like, you have to be so good at like range control with this list, not to have like FTC pop early, right? Which is what you complain about a lot. It's just yes. like, yeah, I can just have some asshole I one running up here five straight, target lock, boost away with Django and ruin everything. Yeah, I mean, you you, you want to know what's great with Django? Uh, when you to go against this, oh, here's a blackout with sensor scramblers, and oh, I'm just gonna decloak round one, five straight, and target lock boost. Like, there you go, Django. Sucks to be you, buddy. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I mean, again, it's just like this kind of like a really high, like, level of play you have to do to be successful with this kind of list. Yeah. And if it works for fun, cool. These are just not the upgrades that I would bring. Yeah. It's a play style thing, I think. I, I, I do still question that lone wolf on Sam personally. I mean, if like if you have Sam just kind of chilling by herself, I get it. I just and I can you know understand like Dooku could be used to preserve Django's health a lot so he sticks around longer. Uh you know, Dirge not going for the bullseye is always just kind of doing the Cody thing and trying to just clip him. At the the bare part of like the side laser, you know, I get it. It's just it's not what I would do. But also, I don't. I didn't make you know top sixteen with a CIS list at a fifty person tournament. So yeah, fair enough. Well, that will conclude our pattern analyzer segment tonight. Um, I don't know. So, do you want to get into Rust Cup? I think we've we've been two hours, so I I, yeah, I, I hold off on that. All right. So, why don't we talk a little bit about Rust Club, Cup next week? Because we're gonna have the Pax Unplugged tournament results that we're gonna cover next week, and we're gonna cover Rust Cup um, as well. Because I think Rust Cup's an interesting tournament. So, Alex, if you could grab those documents or Matt, one of the two for me, that'd be awesome. And Matt, if you want to join us next week too, you're welcome to to talk Rust Cup. So. Whatever floats your boat. I'll let you know what my schedule looks like. Yeah. 
Well, bearded people don't have anything on Sundays. I, I know you don't go to church, so like, oh, like wow. I know you got at least that time frame open, buddy. Yep. So, well, that is reserved for best with bench warmer recordings. Okay, oh. <laughs> Sunday mornings. <laughs> yeah, well, we we never do Sunday nights. So there you go, or Sunday mornings. We don't do. I don't get up that early. You guys are crazy. That's like. <laughs> Tanner sleeps. That's the, like the one day I can sleep in and just not have it, anything it to do. Have the whole day to yeah. us. Yeah. And you, you know what time I got up today? Noon. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I have kids. <laughs> you just got to tell the kids to do their own thing and you'll be up for lunch. Make your own breakfast. Don't bother dad until noon. Make you, I'll make you lunch. That was the reward for the day. So I'm glad JJ wasn't here to talk about the Lions Thanksgiving game. I'm glad he wasn't either because I don't want to talk about it. And uh, yeah, yeah, that was typical Thanksgiving. Let me that tell was you. pretty awful. That was like one of the worst games. I I just want to know: does their defense not want to play anymore? Did their defense just go? Uh, the last two games, we're just not going to play. I did get you know? this nice warm feeling of nostalgia watching it. I mean, did you watch the last game too? The last game before that was very similar, except for they pulled it out of their ass, you know? Yeah, they shouldn't have, but they won. <laughs> and yeah. this time they didn't. Um, no, that one, though. That's important, Bert. Yeah, I did not watch that game. So we don't have cable. I hate this not having cable thing. So I went to B dubs. Uh. <laughs> anyway, enough football talk. We will see you all next week with another episode of Planning Face Syndicate, 9 p.m. Eastern, 2100 UTC Eastern or 0100 UTC. If you have not, you can subscribe right here, right now to our Twitch channel and get alerted every time we go live. Or you could join us on YouTube and get alerts. Typically, I load the, the show within a day. Um, so you can have the show the very next day if you subscribe there. With that being said, thanks, Matt. Thanks, Alex, for joining us tonight. Uh, check out their podcast, the Best Bin Bench Warmers, the Best Michigan Podcast. We'll record eventually. Yes, yeah. someday. <laughs> that one day they record, one day they won't record. Yeah, it's turning in like monthly podcasts, you know. At this point, yeah. <laughs> uh, but either which way, we will be back next Sunday with the Russ Cup discussion and I think we're going to extend that discussion a little bit and talk a little bit about alternative formatting because I think we did this last year when we talked about Russ Cup and I really like the idea of this alternate formatting that can help the community have an alternative way to play Um, and I would actually challenge us to say hey could we ever make this so this is a 2.0 version versus 2.5 version what is the big difference between the two and is there a way to add extended into this to make it even funner more fun funner is not a word so more even more fun thank you all have a good night and we'll see you next week thanks for listening peace